Oui, oui. Now we are live. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to today's webinar on the Protection of Personal Information Act and the CIPC. My name is Shani Kelly, and I will be the facilitator for today's program. Advocate Lucinda Stienka will be our presenter today. She is the senior legal advisor as well as the Deputy Information Officer in the Corporate Legal Unit. The presentation will be followed with a question and answer session. During the webinar, you are welcome to post questions relating to today's topic under the comments. Losinda, Loretta Klassen and Elsie Palani, also from the CIPC Corporate Legal Unit, will respond to these questions. Lucinda Stienkamp will verbally respond to questions after the presentation. If you have any questions that are not related to the topic, please log a call on inquiry on the CIPC website's inquiry system or send a message on the CIPC website, Facebook with Messenger. The recordings of this webinar will remain on Facebook and YouTube should you wish, wish to view it again. Our purpose of today's webinar is as follows. Poppy's aim to give effect to the constitutional rights to privacy as set out in the Constitution of South Africa Section 14, by introducing measures that will ensure that personal information is processed by organizations in a fair and transparent and secure manner. Okay, our program will be, will be as follows. There will be an introduction and welcome by myself, Shani Kelly. I am an educational specialist at the Corporate Education Unit. The it will, my, after my introduction, we will follow a presentation and then we'll have our question and answer session. Now, CIPC was brought into existence by the Companies Act of 2008. In terms of Section 185, Subsection 1 of the Companies Act, the Commission is established as a juristic person to function as an organ of state within the public administration, but as an institution outside the public sector. CIPC is di divided into two sections, the corporate, the business corporate regulations, which consist of companies, cooperatives and CCs, the intellectual property section which is innovation and creativity which consists of patents designs trademarks and copyright okay now i get to the cipc's objectives registration of companies cooperatives and intellectual property rights and the maintenance thereof cipc's objectives also consist of disclosing disclosure of information on its re registers, enforcement of the relevant legislation, promotions of education and awareness of company and intellectual properties law, licensing of business rescue practitioners, monitoring compliance with and contravention of financial reporting standards and making recommendations thereto, report, research, and advise to the Minister on matters of national policy relating to companies and intellectual property law. Okay, a brief introduction. 
CIPC as an innovative organization has found creative ways to enable entrepreneurs to transact with CIPC, for example, registering companies online, as well as to educate clients through virtual webinars. CIPC embraced technology and what it has to offer to enable clients to submit their maintenance application and leg legislation compliance requirements through usage of various platforms, such as e-services, bus bottle, and XBRL. CIPC has also developed a short course named the Learn IBIS, which is free of charge to, to educate company directors regarding their duties and responsibilities. For more details on the course and how to enroll, please send an email to elearning at cipc.co.za. CIPC has a point of entry for businesses in South Africa, also complement other institutions of the DTIC, such as the Triple B Double E Commission and Companies Tribunal in advancing the economy of the country. For existence, the CIPC enables clients to obtain the Triple B Double E certificate through B Bus Portal free of charge. Isn't that amazing? Now, I want to hand over to Avakut Lucinda Stienkup for her presentation. Lucinda, Thank you very you much, Shani. Yes, um, I'm just testing. Am I audible? Yes, you are. Okay, good morning, everybody. Uh, let me just get to that uh, sharing part. Okay. Um, can you see my screen? Yes, we can see. Perfect. Let's just do it in that format so that everybody can see. Uh, good morning, everybody. Once again, sorry for, for the glitches. Um, we are in South Africa after all. So I am sharing um, this popular webinar with you while we're having load shedding. So uh, bear with me if, if you lose me. If if I am uh, become inaudible or anything happens, just let me know. Okay, so um, today we're going to talk about the Protection of Personal Information Act, POPIA, as we na named it, and uh, the CIPC, the application thereof to the CIPC. The Protection of Personal Information Act of 2013, um, referred to as POPIA, falls within the ambit of the Department of Justice and Constitutional Development, um, was previously the uh, Department of um, not, not human, res uh, um, human Rights Commission, uh, but it will move to the Department of Justice. And the purpose of POPIA is essentially to ensure the protection of a person's personal information while still allowing for the effective access to information. This is embodied in PIA, the Promotion of Access to Information Act. The key in this context is to protect the personal information of persons processed by public and private bodies and to balance the right of access to such information with the right to privacy as set out in Section 14 of the Constitution of South Africa. The information regulator has been appointed and together with a team of five members is responsible for the regulation of both PIA and POPIA. POPIA was promulgated on the 26th of November 2013 and only came into effect on the 1st of July 2021. In order to understand the applicability of POPIA on any public or private body's operations, it is necessary to highlight a couple of definitions just to ensure that we understand what is meant with personal information, what is meant with processing, etc. Personal information means information relating to an identifiable living natural person 
and where it is applicable an identifiable existing heuristic person, including but not limited to. Um, there's a whole list there that you can have a look at in the definitions. I just highlighted the important ones. Any identifying number, symbol, email address, physical address, telephone number, location information, online identifier or other particular assignment to the person, the name of the person, if it appears with other personal information relating to the person, or if the disclosure of the name itself would reveal information about that person. Processing means any operation or activity or any set of operations, whether or not by automatic means, concerning personal information. This includes the collection, receipt, recording, organization, collation, storage, updating or modification or use of information. Dissemination by means of trans transmission, distribution or making it available in any other form is regarded as processing. Merging, linking, as well as restriction, degradation, erasure, or destruction of that information is also regarded as processing. It's clear from the above that any personal information that a public or a private body receives is from the start deemed as the processing thereof, which has certain requirements attached. Even destruction of information or making it available in another form than it was received is still deemed processing and the popular rules must be followed. A public body means any department of state or administration in the national or provincial sphere of government or any other functionary or institution when exercising a public power or performing a public function in terms of any legislation. In terms of any legislation, I highlighted that. A public record means a record that is accessible in the public domain and which is in the possession of or under the control of a public body, whether or not it was created by that public body. The CIPC was established as a heuristic person to function as an organ of state, a public body, within the public administration, a public function, but as an institution outside of the public service. So what is the point of POPI? Uh, POPI aims to give effect to the constitutional right to privacy, as mentioned, as set out in the Constitution of South Africa, by introducing measures that will ensure that personal information is processed by organizations in a fair, transparent and secure manner. The purpose of POPIA as it pertains to CIPC is to give effect to the constitutional right to privacy by safeguarding personal information when processed by a responsible party, the responsible party being the CIPC, subject to justifiable limitations that are aimed at balancing the right to privacy against other rights particularly the right of access to information via protecting important interests, including the free flow of information within South Africa and across international borders. And POPIA must be interpreted in such a manner that it does not prevent any public or private body from exercising or performing its powers, duties and functions in terms of the law as far as such powers, duties and functions relate to the processing of personal information and such processing is in accordance with this act or any other legislation. As a public body, as described in section one of POPIA, the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission must ensure that while it performs a public function in terms of the Companies Act, the personal information of its clients are protected and lawfully processed. Those are the key words, lawfully processed. Why the collection and the retention of personal information? The purpose is, is to gather contact information of identifiable living natural persons and where applicable, an identifiable existing heuristic person. To confirm and verify the ad identity of a natural person through ID numbers or a heuristic person registration numbers, or to verify that a person uh, for example, third parties are an authorized user of the CIPC systems, processes, website, etc. For the detection and prevention of fraud, criminal activities, money laundering or any other malpractice based in dishonesty. To ensure compliance with the Companies Act and other legislation that the Commission is mandated to govern. Um, for example, maintaining corporate and IP registers to conduct customer satisfaction, train development, statistical purposes and historical research, or to allow for such research activities to be conducted, making use of the CIPC data. For audit and record keeping purposes, the Companies and Intellectual Property Commission is the sole administrator 
and regulator of the Companies Act and the other legislation as listed in Schedule 4 of the Act to provide collected information in connection with legal proceedings and in the prevention, detection and prosecution of offences. Section 1874 of the Companies Act indicate that the Commission must establish and maintain a company's register and any other register required and make the information in those registers available to the public as efficiently and effectively as possible. So this is the requirement in terms of the Companies Act that is placed on the CIPC is to establish these registers, maintain them and make that information available to the public and other organs of state. Now, um, Poppy is based in eight conditions for lawful processing. We're going to quickly unpack these eight uh, conditions. Uh, in terms of compliance, these eight conditions for lawful processing uh, must be adhered to by any public or private body. The conditions for lawful processing of personal information by or for a responsible party are the following. Accountability, as described in Section 8. The uh, sections that I'm providing is in terms of POPIA. The processing limitation of information, purpose specification, further processing limitation, information quality, openness, security safeguards, and the data subject participation. Now, first of all, accountability. The responsible party must ensure that all conditions are complied with, organizational accountability, and we're looking at up to 10 years imprisonment or 10 million rand fine if found not in compliance by the information regulator. Processing limitation, lawful receipt of personal information and processing thereof in a reasonable manner. So the Act prescribes that processing must be as little information as possible must be processed. So there's no need for additional info to be requested if it's not required uh, for the purpose in terms of our legislation. Purpose specification, collection of information must be for a specific identifiable purpose, as mentioned, the legislative requirement. Further processing limitation, further processing of information must be compatible with the purpose of the initial collection, meaning that if you are processing the information further, it was collected uh, for a specific legislative purpose, and now that information is, for example, shared through disclosure, that must, further processing of that information must be compatible for the reasons why it was initially collected. Information quality, the responsible party must take reasonable steps to ensure that personal information is accurate and updated where necessary and possible. This is where we uh, request our uh, clients to ensure that their information is accurate and correct on our registers. Openness, documents must be maintained as referred to in sections 14 and 51 of the Promotion of Access to Information Act. The information regulator should provide clear guidelines on what information can be disclosed. And uh, all of these uh, codes of conduct, etc., is available on the information regulator website to follow up on the conditions for and the guidelines for processing of personal information. Just notice that the Companies Act Section 212 that refers to confidential information that also needs to be taken into account. And then security safeguards, security measures on integrity and confidentiality of personal information must be in place and maintained. The responsible party of each public and private body must take reasonable steps to prevent loss, damage, unlawful or unauthorized destruction and unlawful access or disclosure. The above relates to both physical, there are hard copy files and cybersecurity automated services. And then lastly, the data subject participation, the manner of access and exemptions must be taken into account, as well as the avenues of correcting or updating the personal information. The conditions as described above are not applicable to the processing of personal information to the extent that such processing is excluded or exempted from one or more of the conditions in relation to such processing, which I will discuss now. The exclusions are uh, indicated in Section 6 and 7 of POPIA. No part of the Protection of Personal Information Act is applicable to the processing of personal information by 
or on behalf of a public body when it involves matters of national security, that that's excluded. So there is no um, indication of confidentiality or uh, information that cannot be disclosed when it's in uh, the interest of national security, such as the identification of financing of terrorist activities, defense or public safety. Papia is not applicable in terms of the investigation and prosecution of offenders, such as the CIBC receiving subpoenas in terms of Section 205 of the Criminal Procedure Act to provide full access to information of juristic persons, their directors, members, whatever information is contained on our registers. Such subpoenas require personal information, as I've mentioned, as including financial statements, and no detail may be withheld. Papia grants data subject the rights of access and correction. A person, which include juristic persons, has the right to know whether his or her personal data is being processed by a controller. The purpose of processing the categories of personal data be being processed and the recipients of said data. Therefore, every person, natural or juristic, has the right to access their own personal information and to ensure that the information is correct up-to-date and accurate. In fact, the CIPC insists that personal information is reviewed and updated annually, which is made possible by filing annual returns. It is each data subject's responsibility to keep his or her personal information up-to-date and accurate. PIA grants the public and private body the rights um, of access to information, Exemptions, uh, which is very important. Section 37 provides for the information regulated to grant exemption to a responsible party to process personal information if the information regulator is satisfied that exemption is in the public interest. This exemption specifically relates to the processing of personal information that is in the public interest and outweighs any interference with the privacy of the data subject. Uh, this uh, section 37 specifically relates to, for example, um, journalists, research, etc., in terms of that information, where the prior authorization for processing of the personal information is required in terms of section 37. Section 38 provides for the exemption in respect of certain functions. Thus, personal information processed for the purpose of performing a relevant function is exempt to the extent to which the application of certain provisions of the Act would likely prejudice the proper performance or discharge of the function. In other words, should the protection of personal information interfere with the CIPC functions or prohibit the proper performance of its functions in terms of the Companies Act, then the exemptions apply. Why is CIPC exempted? CIPC is exempted from certain provisions of POPIA, not all, as it would not be able to fulfill its main objective in terms of the Companies Act and other applicable legislation if that personal information is fully protected. These exemptions include sections 11, 3 and 4. The data subject that we process information of cannot object to the processing. Section 12, CIPC is exempted from these sections. Personal information can be obtained directly from the data subject and third parties. Section 15, further processing is allowed. And Section 18, notice to the data subject when collecting personal information. So these specific exemptions apply to the CIPC in terms of performing its functions. And that is it. Thank you very much for listening. Any questions? Wow, I cannot see a single question on our comments. Lucinda, you did an outstanding presentation. No one has any questions. Isn't that amazing? I, ho I hope it doesn't mean that there is um, confusion. That's why there's no questions. <laughs> no, I'm sure that uh, our audience seems to be well equipped with Popia. Okay. Fantastic. One more time, uh, is there any questions? Is there anything that you would like, Lucinda, to elaborate on? Is there any points that you want her to speak more about? 
Wow. Is there anything more that you would like to share, Lucinda? Um, thank you, Shawnee. What I would just like to add, and this is available on the screen, is the, the CIPC has a dedicated popular mailbox um, that is indicated there. So any uh, issues that uh, a person may have with regards to Poppy or where they require clarity on how their personal information is processed or um, just anything relating to Poppy and the CIPC, you're more than welcome to send it to this email address. Um, I, I am the, the Deputy Information Officer for the CIPC and manage this mailbox. So any questions relating to Poppy and the CIPC, you're more than welcome to send it to me um, and we will provide you with an answer as soon as possible. Thank you. Thank you, Lucinda. I see we have a, a lady or a gentleman here that has a question. Langa, can you please ask your questions? Um, hello, can you, are you please ask the question? Can you type your question in the comments? Okay, the question is, tell me if I feel like that this Popia Act has been violated. How far can I take the issue in terms of reporting it? So he would like to know how will he, how can he report an issue of a violation of the Popia Act? Okay, so um, first of all, it's important to ascertain whether there was an actual violation. Uh, for example, that would depend from uh, situation to situation. Um, but if there is a slight inclination that, that your rights in terms of poppy have been violated, there is a detailed complaints process that be, can be submitted with the information regulated directly. Okay. Anything else that you would like to know? Okay. Nikki would, would like to know, will there be an e-ticket option as well? I do not understand his question. Uh, I uh, think it's a query logged via our QRS systems. Yes. If, I'm if not you would like to have any queries you are welcome to use our qrs systems um if you if you like you can directly email popia at cipc.co.za yes there's not a specific um query table uh, for for popia questions on our qrs system um but it can be filed um with legal as a whole, or as Sean indicated, sent directly to this mailbox. Okay. Seeing that there's no other questions regarding Popia, uh, once again, if you require the presentation, we will be sharing the presentation. However, if you have any other requests, please send us an email on popia at cipc.co.za. We have, we're going to come to an end of this presentation, this webinar, a bit early as there's no further questions that we have. We hope you have found today's presentation informative and that it will assist you. Please remember we will have another Poppya presentation on the 24th of March. So you are welcome to join in on that presentation. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. Good day.